Hello everyone, what's up? So today's video is going to be another Mythbuster video. Sweet. So this is for Nonmed1. He requested me to do the uh, Stromatopelma calciatum, the Feathlight Baboon. And I was actually going to contemplate doing that one right after the H. Maculata video, but I lot, got a lot of requests uh, for people wanting me to upload like certain species, like the Australian species, the uh, Samopoas, the got the G pole stripes so kind of got sidetracked about this one so without further ado my own specimen is going to get a Mythbuster video and <laughs> this species is not for the faint-hearted this one actually scares me a lot and it's uh, kind of a dangerous tarantula to own especially for a new beginner and this one scares the pants out of me so I'm not gonna lie about that Okay, for I have to show you some stuff on the computer regarding the S calcium, regarding my specimen, uh, the bite reports, uh, their aggression, and uh, so forth, and what they look like. I've got my specimen here to show you if uh, she ever comes out. Uh, she molted three days ago, as you saw the video that I uploaded on the 2nd of March. We'll see that uh, she's about four inches. Okay, so here we go. Um, First of all, I'll give you an idea of where these species come from. Uh, the Stromatopelma calciatum comes from West Africa. So it says a lot about the species in the fact that it is an Old World arboreal species. So with Old World arboreal, it means a lot. So Old World means that they are very highly venomous. They are very fast. They move like lightning fast. So if you want to judge if a tarantula is too fast for you, if uh, your T is much more faster than your reaction time, then that's too fast. And the fact that they are super offensive. And particularly this species is very offensive, which I'll uh, describe to you in a bit. Okay, so common name of the species is only one, thank God. It is the feather leg baboon. I guess why they call it the feather leg baboon because of their characteristic small hind legs that are much more lighter than the uh, front legs and the other three pairs. So the scientific name is Stromatopelma calciatum, or as people like to call it, the S-Cal for short, just like people call H. maculata H. mac. And the pronunciation is Stromatopelma, easy to name to figure out. This one here is calciatum. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. Or calciata, as people call it, but that's the old word. I think calciatum is the more appropriate one. Okay, availability and cost. Okay, so the availability and cost of the specimens. All right, uh, you will never find them in pet stores. Um, they're somewhat readily available in online dealers, but uh, they're not very common. Uh, you know, like dealers, I can recommend uh, if you're in the U.S., uh, Ken the Bug Guy, um, Paul Becker, Swift Inverts, Tarantula Spiders Inc. Uh, I really can't tell you if they're very good or not since I'm in Canada. I need a fish and wildlife permit to deal with them, so uh, I can't really c c contemplate on whether or not they're good, but. From what I heard, they have very good reviews on them. And in Canada, it's either Tarantula Canada or Avery's Exotics. Um, they ha don't have them in TC's stock list, but um, tell you how much I paid for mine. I paid for mine about, I think it was $25. And actually, I do have the very first video that I actually featured it. Yeah, it was about that size, about half an inch. Well, this one actually did molt a couple of times before I got it, but it's about 25 bucks for about a half an inch. Okay, so uh, the relative sizes, the females, the males, and the lifespans. Okay, so the lifespans are pretty short because it's a very fast-growing species. Uh, the females have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years, and mature males, well, males take about 3 to 4 years to mature, depending on how you feed them. Um, but they have probably about a year and a half left to live after they mature. So it's a pretty long-lived species as, as, a, as far as a male is concerned. Okay, now for females and males. So as far as I know, um, they're very 
similar to the H. maculata. Uh, the males do not possess tibial hooks, but they do possess uh, the bulbous pedipalps, of course. So, uh, I'll go to Tarantulas Canada's website to show you exactly what they look like. In case uh, we don't see my specimen, which is very likely. Okay, so this is what a sling looks like. As you can see, it really doesn't look like an S. calcedum whatsoever. Uh, this one here is a mature male. You can see it kind of resembles the H. maculata. You can see it's very brown, very drabby colored. And the female, that's what they look like. They kind of look like a brown version of the H. maculata. But these are one of the largest uh, members of the African arboreals. Uh, they can reach a six to six and a half inch leg span, whereas the H. maculata can only attain a five and a half inch. But they're not as big as uh, like L. Vossiopes, uh, P. rufilata, or P. ornata that can attain a 10 inch leg span. One of the largest arboreals uh, out there in the hobby. Okay, so the growth rate now. Yeah, okay, so show you exactly the growth rate of the species and how fast it is. I, I have, thank goodness I record videos on my YouTube channel and documenting the growth rates. So, if you guys remember, um, this is Xena, the warrior princess, well, mine, specimen. As you can see, I uploaded the video on April 16, 2009. So, when I uploaded this video, Stromatopelma molten some updates. That's the time I did transfer her. I have the transfer video here. Uh, yeah, around July 17th, 2010, so roughly around a year, she grew two and a half inches. Now, her recent molt, which was uh, uploaded on March 2nd, she is now four inches. So, that's the best way I could tell you how fast they are. So, it's just awesome that I actually upload these videos for you guys to enjoy and to actually document the molts. So, let's see if I could try to get mine to surface. Um, as you can see it is a very crazy webber so it's good for the species for people who like to have a lot of webs in here so unfortunately you don't see mine very well. Eh, there she is. I'm not gonna get her out because uh, she is flipping mad. And you could probably see the iridescent uh, neon tinges on the legs. That's the arboreal feet pad. And yeah, she's looking face right at me. She can actually run and try to attack me if she wanted to. But yeah. There you go. I just blew on her and... <laughs> Look at that. Ah, it's so hard to see this. There we go. Yeah, it's your typical S. calciatum. <laughs> Not hardened enough yet, so I'll have to wait a few days before she hardens and I'll feed her, probably during tarantula feeding video 65. So as you know, like, every tarantula feeding video that I posted up is when I actually currently feed my teas. Uh, I give her around one super worm every two weeks. Is like how you see it. All right, so now I'm going to close this up because uh, she's pretty mean. Okay, so the enclosure setup, of course, it's an arboreal. So you exactly saw how I kept my slings uh, in pill jars. Uh, the ceramic calciatum as slings tend to burrow, such as this one, and sometimes they don't really lose their burrowing tendencies as they reach your adulthood. They could be kept exactly like H. maculata. Uh, they like it. Uh, fairly dry, but it's good to uh, mist the tank maybe once every two weeks and keep an open water dish if it's an adult. Uh, you'll do fine about the species. Now about their temperaments. And I really underline this word, defensive and offensive. They are very aggressive. Okay, so the story goes about Rob C. Uh, I asked him about the S. calcedum and what he thinks of the spider. 
He actually too is very afraid of the species. Uh, he once told me that he had his full-grown female jump on his face. So <laughs> it is a very dangerous species. So um, just to get you an idea of how bad these are. Okay, this one here, I'll, I'm going to post it up on the channel page. Uh, let's see. It's a very good site that I usually base off my tees on. Um, here we go. Read this part. Of course, aggressiveness is a big no-no. Defensive tee means that a tee will react negatively to a disturbance but will not chase after it. So if you touch the the admin with a paintbrush it goes into a threat posture but it doesn't actually go after it then that means it's a defensive tee. So defensive tees are like my uh, P. Cancerides, uh, my L. difficilis, uh, the A. geniculata, and uh, so forth. So uh, aggressiveness means that a tee will react negatively to disturbance and will chase after disturbance to a certain extent. It wants to attack the disturbance. So. These are two species I consider aggressive. Make no mistake, they are likely to chase you around the room. And wouldn't you know, Field Lake Baboon is right over there next to the Hapopelma Hanenum. I actually never had a Hapopelma Hanenum, so I can't really speak from experience that they actually do that, but I can certainly believe the H. calcid, the S. calcidum, and that actually confirms what I believe to be the most aggressive species. Now their venom is very similar to uh, the H. maculata. Uh, I will include a bite report on arachnivores, I'll post it up on the video description link. Uh, it really depends on the certain individuals, but you can expect the venom to be very strong venom. Uh, it will hurt like hell. Um, symptoms might include severe muscle cramps, cold sweats, uh, extreme nausea, severe leg and muscle cramps, and intense local swelling around the bite area. It's been told from one of the sources that a bite near the neck area, if you have pre-existing conditions, might actually prove fatal to a, an individual, but we really can't back that up and we're not sure if that's exactly true or not. Alright, so now about the breeding. The breeding is, uh, for an African species, they're pretty easy. Uh, if you guys saw my H. maculata uh, breeding video or mating video, they're pretty much exactly how they are and they act. Um, honestly, I would not try to mess with the male, uh, especially when you're separating him, uh, because the male does show aggression to anyone, and I've heard some mating reports that males can bite if you try to save them so if you really want to get bit just let them let the female have him and uh, that will be it but if you do get a sack you'll probably expect around 150 to 200 babies so for recommendations okay this is certainly not a good idea to uh, recommend to a beginner I will not recommend them whatsoever unless you're very highly experienced so if you owned Avix, um, if you own the Samopoas, the Pocotheria, the, S, the H. maculata, then maybe if you're one of them, but you know, it takes real guts to own one and real courage to actually own one as well. So yeah, I actually bought it because uh, it was actually really cool and I had the experience to, with enough H. maculatas to own my very own. That's calcium, and <laughs> when it becomes an adult, it's, she's going to be a tough cookie to deal with. So, anyways, I do hope you enjoy this uh, Mythbuster video on the Stromatopelma calciatum, our very lovely feather like baboon. And I hope you enjoyed it. So, thanks, guys. And the next uh, Mythbuster video will be a pop in a couple days, most likely on Tuesday. And I'll cover the Nandu species since everyone. I have a few requests on those since I have about three non-dos. Alright guys, see you later.